Um, my name is Sam. I'm 25 years old and I have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Currently, I live in a wheelchair accessible property. Currently, I live in a wheelchair accessible property in a community where I am happy. However, three years ago, my situation was drastically different. After successfully graduating from university with a first class honours degree in human geography, I landed my first job as an independent living officer, which is a bit ironic, you might say. During my four years at university, I lived in university halls. Initially, I was supposed to be there for only a year, but due to the lack of suitable housing, I had to be there for the duration of my degree. Upon completing my degree, I was no longer eligible to remain in university halls. Despite being on the Home Choice Register for nearly two years, I could not find a suitable accessible home. I tried the private rental market, but finding accessible property there is like finding a needle in, in a haystack. When the time came to leave university housing, neither the council nor Home Choice had identified suitable accommodation for me, even on a temporary basis. Consequently, I was made legally homeless. Despite having a first class honours degree in human geography, and a full-time job supporting others to live independently, which is also pretty ironic. The council's solution was to place my PAs and, my, and me in hotel rooms, and we couldn't even stay at the same hotel, so I was moved around constantly for weeks on end. Initially, they assured me it would be for a few weeks um, at most, but I ended up staying in a hotel for two months. Um, during which I, ha I had to contribute to it financially. While hotels can be pleasant for short stays, living in one long term, relying on takeaways, yep, and being unable to cook independently while working full time soon became a very isolating experience. Eventually, the council did find me temporary accommodation that suited my care needs. This was no quick fix, however, I was told I would be there for around four or five months at most, but I ended up staying over a year until my current housing situation was found. During this time, due to the severe lack of wheelchair accessible housing, which I would say is more the fault of central government than local authorities, I was offered a property in a small rural town 15 miles away and over an hour by public transport from where I wanted to live. They pushed hard for me to accept it, but I stood my ground. While it might have been physically accessible, it was inaccessible in many other significant ways, such as for my PAs to travel there and the distance to shops and public transport stops. It would have been incredibly isolating if I accepted, and I knew it would soon deteriorate my mental health. Eventually, they relented. Ironically, the bus that connected this town to Bristol was discontinued shortly after they stopped pushing me to go there. Finally, after one year and five months of uncertainty and displacement, the nightmare was over. I was no longer legally homeless. I could finally settle in a place that was accessible in many ways, not just physically, but also socially and practically. I don't want anyone to endure what I did, which is why I am supporting this campaign. I share my story, not for sympathy, but to shed light on the urgent need for more wheelchair accessible homes. For more details about my journey and the wider context surrounding this issue, please listen to my Radio 4 programme titled My Name is Sam, um, where you can hear a little bit more about my um, situation. Thank you for listening. Woo!